Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with part two of the Chaos Themed Nighttime. Thanks for checking out the first video and all the super nice comments. Please keep them coming. I love the comments. Also, don't forget to check out the Long War. Check out the first battle report we've done. I know it's been out for a couple weeks already, but we're going to have something here new for you guys soon. Your comments are a huge part of this process moving forward into this thing. Um, also, don't forget to check out the video I did on how to paint power weapons. That's going to come into play here today. I'm going to basically show you everything but that power weapon since I have a video on it. So follow that link and you'll be able to see that whole little process unfold. Also, got a couple of quick shout outs from Patreon. I've got Rusty, Adam, Fontanius, Jared, and David. Thank you guys. It matters so much to me. Please don't hesitate to check out my Patreon page. Drop me a tip or not. Either way, I still love you. I've been able to buy new lights, uh, buy new camera stands, like all sorts of new stuff. Uh, me and Robbie B over at the Long War, we got all, some, all sorts of new cool, cool things happening. Uh, so real soon, uh, we'll be hitting you with some new content. But in the meantime, check out this tutorial. I'll hit you guys up on the other side. Let's do this thing guys. Wash. This is part of the next level process. We're gonna go in heavy with a brown wash. Thick and liberal. A lot of people will say they like to thin their washes out or they like to go real light with a wash. This is not one of those times. We're going heavy all out. Aggressive transitions, really dark, uh, thick use of the wash. We're gonna come back in and highlight it later so that's what you don't have to worry about over usage here. This is part of my process for creating a realistic and dingy look. It's not next level to just wash it and walk away. We're gonna put it on the skin. We're gonna put it on the fur. And you're gonna start seeing for the first time this fur come uh, coming through, like looking like actual fur. You know, we used that uh, Reaper Orange Brown in the last video. And now we're hitting it with a brown wash. And of course, it's starting to look good. You know, it's it's basically magic. As we remember the old Devil in Mud, I mean, it was, Basically, cheater wash. So coming through, make sure you hit the wash on the, uh, you know, the horns, the the face, or the skeleton, you know, all that stuff. We're gonna immediately jump into the dry brushing technique right after that, though. As soon as it dries, of course, we're using the same orange brown to dry brush back over the orange brown that we hit with that wash. And you see, th that's one of my techniques. I do it all the time, like. Paint a color, wash it, use the same color to dry brush it with. Now we're adding a little bit of yellow. Any yellow will do. I'm, pr I'm probably using a P3 yellow right here. Mix a little yellow back in with that orange brown. Drop a little extra highlight in on the orange. You're going to get a really nice textured look. Come back in with the same bronze flesh from the first video. And we're highlighting the flesh post wash now. This is one of my techniques, like I said. So you're going to paint it. If you're going to paint it with bronze flesh, then wash it. Go back to bronze flesh first before any other highlights. Same thing with the skeleton. Uh, whatever colors we use to paint the skull, after the wash, we're coming back in and starting to pull out some of the highlights with it. Hit the nose, hit the brow ridge, etc. You know, really simple stuff. Like the wash in this format is kind of a paint by numbers application. Like the wash shows you where to put the highlights. Uh, the next thing you see me doing in the video is I'm dropping a couple of extra dry brush uh strokes on the the pipes where i got some of that brown wash in there just want to clean them up get them back to baseline and we're going to come in with my favorite technique typhus corrosion you know me and typhus corrosion we have a, a history together i'm gonna come in i'm gonna find all the joints i'm gonna find all the little areas that i think look visually cool i don't really put almost any thought into where the rush should be the corrosion should be i only think about it as an artist um and i like the way it looks here getting it deep in the cracks getting it getting it in the, in the underbelly getting it on the knees come in hot man like the barrels of the gun on his on his on his left arm his his dreadlocks all that stuff now that we're done with that um i'm gonna go back to the wash i know i'm going i'm all over the place in this video uh but for some reason i felt the need to take a break from washing and go into all that typhus corrosion maybe it's because i was waiting for the typhus corrosion to dry and it's drying while I'm painting the, the skull. 
So I washed all that, that bronze. And as you can see, I came in with burnished gold and I'm highlighting the tips of it. Look, it's looking good, man. Like I know, <laughs> I know I'm talking, I'm going off on tangents here. I'm trying to catch back up. But as you can see, I've washed all that bronze and came back in with burnished gold and a little bit of the original bronze color kind of mixed together in a blend. And I just found all those points, all those tips, all those edges. And I just did a quick little edge highlight with a quick little wet blend. Super easy. Now let's hit up the um, the plates, all the armor plates I left off. The reason I left them off is because I was trying to get to all the under trim underneath all those and it would just be impossible with the trim glued on. What were these plates glued on? I'm sorry. Same kind of technique. Hit it with the burnt umber from the first video. Hit it with the scorn red from the first video and I'm sure we're about to transition into a scarlet red and some orange. It's the same technique, you know, just if it ain't broke, don't fix it, man, you know. <laughs> I love the way it looks, and you can see I'm coming in now with the uh, the brighter colors uh, down at the bottom. And a lot of people get really literal with the Xenthio highlight. For those greaves, I like to go from the bottom up on the highlight because I feel like the guy's lurching body creates a shadow on the top. So it, it doesn't seem like in your mind it, it, it fits that way to have the highlight come from the bottom, but it always looks cool to me, so I just keep doing it. And now I'm coming back in with the burnt umber and a little black, and I'm burning out the edges of these armor plates, re you know reintensifying that that dark transition. Of course, we got to come back in and we got to hit these little trim pieces with bronze, molten bronze, the P3 line. Um, and of course, this is this is one of those techniques where you got to slow down the the strokes. You got to come in smooth and slow. And, you know, big shout out to my brother on this. I mean, he green stuffed all those marks, all those chaos icons, and that uh, the symbol of corn on the uh, uh, what is it, the uh, crotchal region. Coming back in with that Rizza Rust tech. This is another um, very special technique to me, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to just manually, no sponge technique here. I'm going to put the rust exactly where I want to put it. I'm not going to let any of it, you know, go wild or, or go random. This is, I find that the sponge is not good for this stuff. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's looking appropriately chaos -y. It's looking like it's, you know, hardly ever been, you know, maintained. And they don't, they don't have any tech priest oil in this thing up. This thing is just held together by arcane, you know, chaos power. So, you know, now I'm kind of feather dry brushing it in. You know, like there's a lot of techniques. You just got to go wild with it. Just jump in, man. Grab that Rizzo Rust and just experiment. It is a great technical color, and I love the extra pop it creates. The next thing we're going to do is, of course, my oxide effects. I love this color too. A lot of people tell me they don't like it. I don't care. I love it. And half of what I do is because I love to. So coming in, dropping some streaks, some. Get that like awesome, you know, corrosion, oxidation effect, you know, just come in the cuts, come in the corners, find the little deep crevices. Um, I like to water this paint down though. This is one of the rare ones I do that too. Like this, this technical effect, it's kind of like a wash, but you're definitely going to get more out of it if you use a little bit of water. That's been my experimentation process with it. I would like to see what you guys think. I don't know how you guys use it, but... I'm going to come in here and I'll see, and I, and I guess the uh, the video is kind of broken up by by being fast. Like I'm letting certain things dry on one part of the model while I come in and do these other things. So obviously now I'm washing these bronze pieces while I seal coat the body of the Night Titan and let that, that dry. Just trying to be as efficient as possible, you know. Come in, come in heavy with this. Be careful not to spill that wash all over the armor, but get a little bit in there to separate the brass bits from the red bits. You do want there to be a little bit of a border there. And that's easily done with a detail brush and a little bit of patience. Like I said, washing is absolutely paid by numbers. It also helps you create a guideline for later highlights. That's something I was saying earlier. You, it kind of shows you where you need to put the highlights and where you need to put the you know, oxide around the bolts and stuff like that. I mean, and you can see it's, uh, it's antiquing these uh, pieces of metal, but they're not looking like that clean, bright metal we have on the rest of the model. It's always important to remember <laughs> like how much, how, how important it is to highlight things. Here's a quick little technique right here. Uh, I'm painting some scratches into the armor 
Basically, I put a little wash in the crevice, and then I'm doing a little orange underneath it. You can see, it looks exactly like it's supposed to. A couple of gashes in the armor. I mean, it's dope. Uh, it's a super easy technique. You, you don't even need there to be three-dimensional gashes in armor to do this. You could just draw these scratches on armor if you wanted to. Like, this is super easy. Um, here we go, painting the, um, the skulls in the center field here. Like, same old earth. A Vallejo Air Earth. Um, and also, a quick shout out. Do you see these, um, the broke armor pattern on these greaves? My brother had to grease up those. I mean, they don't come that way. Um, and obviously, now I'm coming and dropping a highlight using some of that burnished gold and some of that, uh, what is it called? Sorry, Pri Privateer Press Molten Bronze mixed a little bit in with the burnished gold. And then just kind of wet blend it back and forth, get the highlight that you want. It is. A very important technique. You need to come back and highlight these big pieces of trim on these models. They're just too big to let the wash do. Over. And I mean, and it's time consuming. I'm not gonna lie. This is this is the part of the project where I put my tunes on and just zone out and try to just get it done as fast as possible because it is boring as hell. Uh, but it is the thing that makes the model look amazing. And here's some secret tech: come in with some steel, some bright silver. Mix it in with the burnished gold and just do it on the final peaks of these of these arrows. It helps create an obviously more dramatic highlight. And I'm all and contrast is the name of the game. The, the more contrast you have in a model, the better it looks. Period. End of discussion. And you can see, don't overuse it. Just come in in a couple of little little raised surfaces, like the, the final tips, that final little 90 degree angle. Let's come back in here and finish these skulls up real quick. Um, Obviously, I said I'm, I'm all over the place in this video, uh, but I'm trying to show you guys the process. Like while one thing is being done, a wash is drying or a seal coat is, is drying, I can go finish this off. When this is done, I'll put it down, go back to one of those pieces, then come back to this. It is essentially the, the like how I organize my my painting table to be as fast as possible. I don't sit there and paint one thing till completion, then the next thing. You kind of have to work it like an assembly line, like how to how to work all the pieces and nurture them together in the right order so you're never waiting on something to do the next thing. I always have something to do while I'm waiting for something to dry. And it's important to seal coat in between stages with these types of big models, these resin models especially. I like to use the, t the testers uh, model masters. Anyway, let's jump right back into it. I uh, got the oxide out on the brass now. So you can see, you can see the cutscene there. I, I didn't show you guys, but I did splash some typhus corrosion on the greaves. Uh, must have forgot to turn my camera on for that, but you can see, I've, I've, uh, I've showed you in other videos how to do that effect. That was a little bit of a sponge technique there. But now I'm coming in with that oxide and I'm really put, laid it on thick for the, uh, the, the, that brass uh, armor. Dropping a couple of streaks off, making it look chaos as hell, man. I love these technical effects. They are made for this type of thing, man. This these chaos models. Like, I mean, look how look how crucial this guy looks. I mean, he is an absolute badass, man. The but check out the sword here. So, like, don't forget, check out my sword video, my power weapon video. I actually finished this sword off to completion in a separate video, giving you guys a whole additional 10 minutes of work on how I did this sword. So I wouldn't have to skip over it. And also, I wouldn't have to insult you guys by doing a whole weekly tutorial <laughs> on just the sword. All right, guys, don't forget to share this video. That is how you enter into a drawing to win some cool prizes from Green Stuff Industries. All the technical maker stuff, everything, that is on the line. All you have to do is share this video. I'll put your name in a hat. I'll pull out the winners. I have about four prizes to give out. In the meantime, thanks for watching, players. Yo, dog. thanks for checking out my channel. And don't forget, I've got plenty of other tutorials, tips and tactics, and many more. Also, if you get a chance, check out my best friend Robbie B's channel, Spiky Bits. He's got tons of sick videos dropping. Thanks for watching.